May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio podcast. I'm D.C. Poobah of Audio and Cuke Archives. Pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So um, today uh, uh, we're going to start a new Shunyu Suzuki lecture. Uh, I will uh, read it, uh, and then I will, you know, uh, I'll read from the verbatim, and I'll um, edit uh, running along, you know, little bits. Uh, and uh, I edited the audio already. I mean, it would be better if I took my time and edited the transcript. There is a lightly edited transcript, but it's not edited. It's light. I'd edit it more than that. That was Gordon Geis. I think this is a Gordon Geis one. Anyway, one of them I looked at recently was his, and it's very lightly edited. Um, but um, anyway... Uh, this is a uh, talk he gave on uh, Thursday, July 2nd, 1971, in the city. Uh, I think he was getting ready to come down to Tassajara, and he's talking about precept. It's entitled, on com. it's entitled, Real Precepts Are Beyond Words. I think the, the reason... He chose this topic is uh, uh, there's going to be a, 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 a lay ordination coming up. There was a lay ordination, I believe, in July of 71. It was the second one. First one was in 1970. Well, that's the second one. The first one was in 62, and then he didn't give any more till then. He decided... Um, People needed more time before he could trust them, sort of to really be interested because he'd see people, you know, seeming to be committed and then moving on to other things. It doesn't mean you can't do other things if you're a Buddhist or if you're a lay ordained Buddhist. Anyway, I guess he just saw no need for it. But then after Tassajara was established and... Uh, uh, the city center, uh, the, the uh, you know, it was clear there was a form there that uh, people could continue with the Zen Center a lot easier. And uh, with the teaching, and there were older students coming on, and blah, 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 all that. So uh, there was like 50, 60 people ordained in, in that one. Uh, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. So uh, first, I'll read the uh, the uh, lecture, and then you'll hear the audio of him speaking. It is fairly clear, uh, and uh, it's um, what, the way I chose it. What, well, first I went to the end, right? And um, the, uh, the the one I did before was the last lecture he gave. It was. Um, in the Nothing Special series, which is uh, a, uh, a group of, you know, around 60 or something lectures that were chosen by uh, the people who were working on the verbatim transcripts uh, like 20, a couple of decades ago. And they were chosen uh, basically on how well they read so maybe there were 50 of them because I remember, I think uh, the, the file names have an NS after them to indicate that, the, the audio file. And I, I, I remember, I think 49 I listened to and I skipped it, the audio. 
there was just so much, um, you know, background noise and stuff. And I came to this one was the next one was like 48. Yeah, so I guess there were 50 of them. Uh, uh, unless I remember wrong. And um, this had pretty good audio. And um, indeed, I think it, it is uh, a rewarding <laughs> lecture. It's very interesting what he has to say. And uh, more than interesting, but... Um, uh, and I think I got I got a little less than halfway through it, but I'll, I'll uh, I, I plan to finish it with the second uh, reading of it, the second clip, and uh, then uh, you know I keep saying I'm not going to put the whole lecture on. I don't think so. Um, I mean, it may, it's you know the that just there's the first clip and the second clip, and then we'll we'll get the audited audio on jishinyusuzuki.com. And uh, if you need help, you uh, if you want to listen to it, you can uh, go to shinyusuzuki.com. Uh, if you want to read it while you're listening to it, you can go to shinyusuzuki.com and uh, go to the lecture search form and then write um, keywords in the um, keyword box. And you can write Real precepts are beyond words, <laughs> or you can write precepts and then look look at one of the later ones that comes up. But don't do that. There's too many. That, that would bring up too many. Uh, I think the best thing to write is 71-07-2. Uh, and that's the file name. It'll come up that way, too. All right. So uh, here we go with real precepts are beyond words. Real precepts are beyond words. Thursday, July 2nd, 1971, City Center. Today, I would like to lecture about precepts. When I say precepts, the first thing you will think of is something like the Ten Commandments or the Ten Grave Prohibitory Precepts. But Zen precepts are not like that. To study Zen precepts means to understand Zazen. Another interpretation of Zazen is precepts. Using the word precepts, we explain what is actually Zen. The purpose of receiving precepts, observing precepts, is not just to remember what we should do or what we shouldn't do. How we observe precepts is to practice Zen or to extend our practice to our everyday life. So the idea of precepts is completely different from the usual understanding of precepts. The foundation of precepts, the true meaning of precepts, well, there are various ways of understanding one reality. One reality which is always with you. Reality which is not divisible in three or in 16 or in 10. Tentatively, we divide. We explain it from various angles. But that's just words. The real precepts are beyond words. If we talk about it, it is not uh, the real precepts already. So if you think precepts are just to observe some various rules, and it's very different or very far away from the true understanding of the true practice of precepts. So the first precepts of the 16 precepts we observe uh, are... Uh, well, how can I put into English uh, words one reality which cannot be divided into three or sixteen? One reality, precept of one reality, you may call it emptiness or you may call it the absolute. That is one reality, you know. That is the first precept we receive, we observe. So as you may know, 
This is the most important, maybe the most, I cannot say the most important, but this is mm, the most. Anyway, all the precepts start from this precept. Without understanding this precept, our precepts don't make any sense. One reality which we cannot divide by three or six or 16, it can be understood on a great scale, whatever there are in the world or in the universe, or what kind of rules we have, or what kind of truth we can observe in various ways, or moral code, or rules, or theory, our science observes. All those truths are included in this big scale of the precepts. We understand the precepts in various ways. Scientists understand in their own way. And various people understand in uh, religious ways. There must be various ways of understanding it. What we observe is the one precept. That is the precept you will receive. When you receive precepts, 16 precepts, you will understand then, you know, how you receive precepts. How you receive precepts is just to practice zazen, just to to be yourself, then you can observe the precepts. Uh, looks like I'm talking about something <laughs> about heaven, <laughs> but it is not so. I am talking about each one of you and myself. He takes a drink of water and says, and about the water and about the stuff. When you know stuff is really stuff, this stuff includes everything. When you just practice zazen on your black cushion, your practice includes everything, and you practice zazen with Buddha, with various patriarchs, and with all sentient beings. That is what I always repeat over and over. Whether your practice is good or bad, it doesn't matter. If you accept your practice as your own, then that practice includes everything. At that time, you have precepts which include everything as the absolute being includes everything. We say, you know, something which includes everything is the absolute. But it is actually, it's more than that. It is beyond our understanding. You may think if you add, you know, all of you and all... Uh, the beings which exist in the universe, then that's the absolute. But it is not so, because that absolute can be understood by your mind. Something which you understand is, is already not absolute, because your mind limits real understanding of the absolute. When you understand, it is not so. When you don't understand and when you just sit, when you become just a stone or stuff, you know, then you include everything. That is our Zazen practice. This is such an important point for us. If we lose this point, uh, we'll be easily caught by some idea or some experience in, you know, our practice. My practice is good, very good. Recently, I saw Buddha in Sazen. <laughs> Various Buddhas, all the Buddhas came to me and admired my practice. You're laughing, but it's actually the kind of practice that exists. And they practice this kind of practice very sincerely. But even so, it is good practice. But even so, comparing to the practice, uh, just sit, you know, it's beyond comparison. Just to sit is much better than to see all the Buddhas in the world. Do you understand why it is? That is the point, you know, to know how important a practice it is to just be yourself. When I couldn't read Zen books in English, you know, Alan Watts said, you know, when a stone is completely a stone, that is a real stone. Uh, that is what he put, you know, uh, when he put Zen into words. When a stone is really a stone, then you know, when a stone is a stone through and through, that is really a stone. 
not only is that really a stone, or when it is really a stone, the stone includes everything. The stone cannot be picked up by anyone when a stone is really a stone because it is not a stone, you know. So someone may kick it, but when a stone is really a stone, you cannot do anything with it. When a stone is really a stone, you can't pick it up. Even though you think you picked it up, still, it is part of the universe. It is uh, you who thinks you picked it up, but actually you didn't. It is still a part of the universe. You cannot pick up the whole universe. If you say, so I picked up the whole universe, where are you? You are a ghost. You are outside of the universe. This is just delusion. Nothing exists outside of the universe. All that exists is inside the universe. So that uh, you say you picked up a stone is big delusion. Stone is still a stone. You cannot do anything with it. If you understand this point and sit, that is how you receive the precepts. The only There's only one way to observe precepts, perfect precepts. There is no other way to observe precepts. This precept is called, I don't know what, I don't know how to interpret uh, precepts, which are which are not divisible into three. Why we say three is there's two more. Another point of the precepts is, as you know, we say Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. I have been talking about Buddha precepts, which cannot be divided in three. And the next one is a Dharma precept. Dharma is, you know, the law of the universe. There is, in some way, you know, there's always things going. If you throw something, you know, away, it will eventually come to the earth because of the theory of gravitation. So there are some rules uh, in the way that things exist. So if we say rule, uh, law, or theory, that theory or rule includes everything, nothing exists free from the law or theory. That is Dharma. A lecture about uh, precepts. Uh, if uh, I say precepts, the first you will uh, think of is uh, something like uh, Ten Commandments or um, Ten Great Prohibitory Precepts. But uh, Zen Precepts uh, is not uh, like that. To study Zen Precepts uh, means to understand uh, Zazen. Another interpretation of Zazen is uh, precept. Using word uh, precept, uh, we explain what is Zen actually. And the purpose of receiving precept, observing precept, uh, is not just to um, remember what we should do or what we shouldn't do. And how we observe precepts is to practice them or to extend our practice to our everyday life. So the idea of precepts uh, is completely different from the usual understanding of uh, precepts. The precepts, you know, which is um, uh, or foundation of precepts or true meaning of precepts is um, various way of understanding of one reality, one reality, which is always with you, reality, which is not dividable in 
three or in sixteen or in ten. Tentatively, we divide, we uh, explain it from various angles, but uh, that is just words. Uh, real, you know, precept is beyond word. If we talk about it, it is not a real precept already. So if you think precept is just to observe some uh, various rules, it is very uh, different or very far away from the uh, true uh, understanding of the precept. So the first precepts of 16 precepts we observe is mm, uh, how can I <laughs> put into English word? Mm, one reality uh, which cannot be divided in three, three or sixteen. One reality. Precept of one reality. You may call it emptiness. Or you may call it uh, the absolute. And that is the one reality, you know. That is the first precept we uh, receive, we observe. So you may know this is the most important. I cannot say the most important, but uh, this is the... Uh, anyway, uh, all the precepts start from this precept. Without understanding this precept, uh, our precepts doesn't make any sense. One reality which we cannot divide three or six or sixteen. Uh, it can be understood in a great scale. Whatever uh, they are in this world or in this universe. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, rule uh, we have or what kind of truth we can uh, observe in various ways, or moral code, or rules, or theory, uh, we scientists observe. Uh, all those uh, truths is included in this big scale of the uh, precepts. We understand the precepts in various ways. Scientists understand his own way. And religious people understand uh, religious way. There must be various ways of understanding of it. But what we study, what we observe is the one Precepts. That is a precept we receive when you receive precepts. Sixteen precepts. You may understand then how you receive precepts. How you receive precepts is just practice doesn't. Just to be yourself. Then you can observe the precept. <laughs> it looks like I'm talking about something <laughs> about heaven. <laughs> but it is not so. I'm talking about each one of you and myself. And about the water and about the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, st 
stuff is dairy stuff. This stuff includes everything. When you just practice that and on your practice, your practice includes everything. And you practice that and with Buddha, with various patriarch, and with all sentient beings. That is, you know, uh, what I always repeat over and over. Whether your practice is good or bad, it doesn't matter. If you accept your practice as your own, then that practice includes everything. At that time, you have precepts which include everything. As the absolute being includes everything. Uh, we say, you know, mm. something which includes everything is the absolute. But uh, it is actually, it is more than that. It is beyond our understanding. You may think if you add, you know, uh, all of you and all the being which exists in this universe, then that is the absolute, but it is not so because that absolute can be understood by your mind. You know, something which you understand is already is not absolute. You know, because your mind limits the real understanding of the absolute. When you understand, it is not so. When you don't understand, and when you just sit, <laughs> when you become just a, a stone or a staff, you know, then you include everything. That is, you know, our dozen practice. This is so important point for us. If we lose this point, you will be easily caught by some idea or some experience in your you know, uh, practice. My practice is uh, good, very good. Recent, recently, I saw Buddha in Zazen. <laughs> <laughs> various Buddha. All the Buddha came to me <laughs> and admired my practice. <laughs> you are laughing, but uh, it is actually that kind of practice exists. And they practice uh, this kind of practice very uh, sincerely. It is good practice, but even so, comparing to the uh, practice, just sit. It is beyond comparison. <laughs> just to sit is much better than to see all the Buddha in the world. <laughs> Do you understand why? <laughs> why is it? And that is the point, you know to know how important practice it is just to be yourself. When I couldn't read a uh, Zen book in uh, English, you know, Aram Watts said, you know, when a stone is completely stone, <laughs> that is real stone, he said, that is what he put, you know, that then into what? When a stone is uh, stone through and through, <laughs> that is really uh, a stone. Not only that is really stone, uh, when it is really stone, the stone includes everything. 
the stone cannot be, you know, picked up by anyone when a stone is really stone. Because it is not stone, you know. <laughs> so someone may kick it. But when a stone is really stone, you cannot do anything with it. When a stone is really stone, you cannot, you know, pick up. Even though you think you picked up, still, you know, it is a part of the universe. It is you uh, who thinks you could pick up, but actually you didn't. You didn't. It is still a part of the universe. You cannot pick up whole universe. If you say so, I picked up whole universe. Where are you? <laughs> you are a ghost. You are outside of the universe. That is just delusion. Nothing exists outside of the universe. All of what exists is inside of the universe, you know. So that you say you picked up a stone, it's big delusion. Stone is still stone. You cannot do anything with it. If you understand this point and sit, that is how you receive precepts. Only one way to observe precepts, a perfect precept. There is no other way to observe precepts. This precept is called Mm, I don't know what, to, what, how to interpret. Precepts which is, uh, uh, which is not uh, dividable in three. Why we say three is there's two more. Another point of this precept is, as you know, we say Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. I have been talking about Dhamma precepts, which cannot be divided in three. And next one is Dhamma precept, Dhamma. It is, uh, you know, uh, law of the universe. In some way, you know, always things is going. If you throw something, you know, uh, away, it will eventually come to the earth because of the theory of the gravitation. There's some rules, you know, in the way of uh, things exist. So if we say rule, that uh, law or theory, that theory or rule include everything. There's nothing exists uh, free from the uh, law or theory. That is Dhamma. This has been a cute Audio Podcast. I'm DC Puba of Kuk Audio and Kuk Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Senor with Dog and Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening. Mm-hmm.